What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Now, I know what you're thinking, and yes, thank god the unknown F team is back, and we're ready for some damage. Now, looking at my opponent's team, uh, they're working with a little bit of an interesting squad, whereas it's got some never-used stuff mixed in with like things like the Gyarados and the Zapdos. Uh, overall, like, like a, a nice little mixed team, and uh, it's looking like this is going to be an uphill battle for my squad of outcasts, but we're going to go ahead and jump right into the match, and... See how it goes. So as for a lead, I'm feeling like the hot dog tree is kind of the dude for the job as he's going to end up leading off with the Rhydon there and I do lead off with the Sudowoodo. So the reason for that is mostly because Stealth Rock is looking super important for this matchup for me. Uh, knowing that he has mons like the Moltres who takes half damage from that. Zapdos does not like the Stealth Rock switch in, neither does the Gyarados. So I do want to prioritize getting up the Stealth Rock. And this is kind of a little bit of an interesting matchup here, as we can both scare each other with an Earthquake, um, but we decide to just kind of throw Stealth Rock at each other and have a little rock party. So, um, I do not really want to stay in here with Sudowoodo, and I decide to make a little bit of a risky play. Expecting an Earthquake, I'm going to go into Low Fat the Butterfree, and as you'll see here, instead Low Fat comes in on a direct yell to the face. So, the roar happens. That's going to get me out of there, and that's actually really unfortunate, because now I have to switch into another set of Stealth Rock on Butterfree, and it's not looking ideal. You know, I probably should have switched directly into Butterfree from the lead, but I really wanted to get those Stealth Rocks up. But, unfortunately, now it's me, a little snaky boy, against the Rhydon, which is a horrible matchup. But I'm actually expecting them to go for the Roar again, expecting me to switch. So, I go for a Switcheroo, and that's way too much switching for one turn, even though nothing happens, as he actually ends up going for the Earthquake instead. Um, so I lose my Seviper early, and that is really bad, so the match is definitely not starting off in my favor. Uh, kind of how I would wanted it to go, but that's fine, we're gonna adapt and we're gonna overcome. And Butterfree is ready to just spread some low fat, low fat spread all over the place, and aka Sleep Powder. So I come in, uh, luckily I am e an odd amount of HP, so I'm able to live one more Stealth Rock switch in at 1 HP. Um, but they end up going into the Vileplume. Now, Vileplume is actually a very scary Pokemon for my team, and that's actually perfect that this thing switches in. Even though the, the Sleep Powder obviously doesn't work, I can then basically just go right for an Air Slash. And here's a little bit of a double-edged sword here, as I have a Life Orb on this Butterfree, just to try to maximize the amount of damage this thing can do. Um, but of course, when I'm stuck with 1 HP, it's, you know, not gonna help me out as I just knock myself out. But it's actually, it's fine, because the Life Orb did allow me to... Uh, get the KO on the Vile Plume, and you know, that's okay. So now we got an empty battlefield, and I'm just gonna go right back into Treesif. Ready to do some cheerleading with my pom poms, as he actually ends up switching into the Zapdos. Um, so this thing's gonna take a considerable amount from the Stealth Rock here, and there's a couple different scenarios here, depending on what type of Zapdos this is. This could be good, this could be bad. Either way, I'm gonna go right for a head smash, as this thing does reveal it is in fact Defog with that many rock weak mons on their side. Of course, it's gonna be a Defog Zapdos, um, but that does allow me to go right for the head smash. Luckily, I'm able to connect, and a head smash to a Zapdos is a bad time for a Zapdos. That pointy boy is gonna go down, and Pseudo Widow taking care of legendaries is always a, a fun sight to see. So, unfortunately, of course, since I touch it with my forehead, uh, I do get staticked from its ability, which doesn't really matter too much because I'm not gonna outspeed stuff, but uh, I also do like half to myself with the recoil. Um, but honestly, it's great to just be able to take care of that Zapdos. Unfortunately, uh, they did get rid of the Stealth Rock, and now they go right back into the Rhydon, who is at least carrying that Choice Specs item. So, whatever this thing decides to use, I know that I can expect it to, you know, either switch or continue to use that move. So, uh, he does go for the Earthquake, was really kind of hoping for an overprediction there so I could get my rocks back up, but it's not going to happen, and the Hot Dog goes down. But not before taking care of the Zapdos, and I'm proud of you, little fella. Um, so... Now I know this thing is locked into Earthquake, and I also know that Unknown F is levitating. So I can come in here essentially for free, and just go right for, I gotta select one of my big selection of moves as I go for the Hidden Power. <laughs> and that is going to do about half to ride on here, as to, to my surprise it actually stays in. Goes for the Earthquake, but the reason why is probably because nobody ever sees Unknown battling. So like, <laughs> even though my dude is over here floating, I uh, didn't expect to levitate. So Unknown says, basically, fuck it, we take those W's, and we go right for another Hidden Power, which takes care of the Rhydon. So a nice little two-hit KO there. Uh, Choice Specs is allowing me to take care of it. And in comes the big old floating rubber chicken, who's flying a little too damn high. I don't know why they had to make him fly so high over here. It's like, we get it, bro. You're, you're, you're floating. Anyway, 
Um, I don't really want to hard switch into anything. Moltres hits super hard, especially this thing's like a specs option. Um, so he just goes right for the flamethrower, and of course, you know, Unknown is not going to be able to take that. So, uh, unfortunately, it does go down, but we did get Unknown to get a knockout here, and that's what we call an Unknown W. I should change that thing to a W. I, fuck the F. Anyway. Uh, so now I get a free switch, and Charlotte is looking like the best switch in here because I have the thick fat ability, uh, meaning I take reduced damage from fire moves, and I could potentially try to get this pig to set up some stuff, or potentially help me out in the late game here. So they go for the flamethrower. Um, judging by that damage, I'm thinking that is probably specs, as I'm pretty defensive, uh, especially defensive that is, but I get, a, I get a freaking burn, and you know, burnt bacon is just always a bad time. Uh, this post was made by not crispy bacon gang. I, I, I don't like my bacon crispy, all right? So <laughs> burn kind of sucks. As I go for the psychic, I am able to knock it down to the range where it'll be a two-hit KO, but I figure I have to try to make some plays here, thinking maybe if I could catch him on a switch and get up a substitute, Grumpig could help me out here. Um, so I go for the substitute. I don't take much from that flamethrower. Um, I, I have just enough health to be able to set up the whole beanbag, but unfortunately... Uh, they just stayed in, which of course is kind of the obvious play staying in there with the Moltres. Um, just it, it depends when you're playing from behind. You really kind of have to make have to make some uh, some risky plays to try to get a potential payout. But it doesn't quite happen for me there. Luckily though, uh, this thing just has to flamethrower the beanbag, lights that bitch on fire, and I can then just go right for another psychic here uh, to knock out the Moltres. Now it would have been really nice to have my stealth rock up there uh, because the first psychic would have been able to take care of it. So that could have potentially set me up. Uh, in a way better position, at least, but Moltres goes down, and at this point, they're down to, I believe, two mods. They have the Gyarados and the Metacham. Both very scary, especially being the Gyarados, as that's a, a pretty large uh, pretty large threat. doesn't matter, like, what tier you're playing in, but uh, they do end up just switching directly into the Gyarados, and at this point, this thing can easily knock me out with, with, with whatever, or it could, you know, go for a Dragon Dance, and do all sorts of scary ass Gyarados shit. But he just goes right for the waterfall. Does take care of Charlotte, which is unfortunate. If I if I wasn't uh, burnt and that thing wasn't specs, potentially I could have been able to maybe live one. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So now I bring in the Floof Ball. My last Pokemon is going to be the Primate, but I'm thinking, all right, I do have Choice Scarf. I can outspeed. All I got to do is go for the Stone Edge. But I did not put Stone Edge on this set. I switched it for Poison Jab, like literally... For no reason, I was annoyed with fairies, but now I realize I really wish I had that <laughs> that rock coverage. Uh, so I have to go for the poison jab. It you know doesn't do enough for a two-hit KO, unfortunately. As I am able, at least able to live a waterfall though, so you love to see it. But I just can go for one more poison jab here. Um, I do actually end up getting the poison, so there's a little little nail in the coffin there. So <laughs> Gyarados is unfortunately gonna be able to knock me out with an ice fang, and that's gonna be the end of the match. But you know there's not really much. I could have done, there was certainly some misplays, but overall, it's still a pretty fun game. Uh, I have a lot of fun with this team, it's really kind of, it's not great, <laughs> especially when you're going up against stuff like, um, you know, Gyarados and Zapdos and things like that, but it's always the, you know, that's the fun of the game, boys. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.